just come back from the range today. I've confirmed the zero on my 300 Norma Magnum again. The other day I set the zero stop and I made a rough adjustment off of my last target shot, which is why I wanted to check the zero. And today it was perfect, it was bang on. I only fired one shot to confirm the zero and that was it, I was done with that. Also took the 4570 out using the cast loads that I've developed. Um, I have two batches of brass, Winchester brass and Starline brass, 50 of each. And I had been using the Winchester brass for the loads and I wanted to see if the same load in the Starline brass um, held the same zero basically. So I took some of them out, threw a shoot and see up at 50 yards and then fired I think in total three shots, I believe it was three shots. I've got the targets here, I'll take a photo of them, chuck them in, see as you can see. But yeah, basically it didn't really change anything. It was within the error margin of the other groups with the Winchester brass, so all in all it was a good day. And basically now i just got to clean the guns. So. Okay, I've got the 4570 here, just got to take the lever off. So that we can clean the barrel and then action from the breech end rather than the muzzle end. The easiest way to do that is just with a little gunsmithing screwdriver set. Just remove this one the screw. Chuck him in there so I don't lose him. Pretty much it. I'll sit that kit down there now. Just grab some gloves and I'll be back. Bolt out. And the ejector. Don't lose that little bugger, otherwise, you'll be in a world of hurt. Well, you can buy factory originals and actual aftermarket replacements for them. I'm also going to grab a rag to chuck over the stock there to protect it from anything. Just like so. I'm also going to chuck this over the barrel to catch any patches and drips, which means that I have to remove the front sight hood, which is easy enough because it just slides off your fingers. Funny how dirty it gets just for three shots. Um, I'll come off the Jaguar itself for any interest. That is three rounds. And I believe that's actually unburnt powder. I don't know what else that would be. It looks like unburnt powder. quite dirty as well. I'm not going to show it on the camera. I'm just going to get this done as fast as I can because I've got other stuff I want to do today. I've got three days off from work and I've got to do multiple loads of laundry. Do some other housework today. Come out substantially cleaner as it 
should for only three rounds. I had this thing out the other day shooting a steel bomb. I'm just going to shut this door. I don't know if you, if you hear it on the camera, but I've got my tumbler going in the background. Just tumbling 50 cases, the Winchester cases. Getting them clean. Because with these reduced loads, the cases don't obturate against the chamber walls very well. You get a lot of carbon blowback around the case. Strokes for the brush. Three shots fired. Shouldn't be too too bad. And like I said, I'm really only using the, the phosphor bronze brush, just in case I'm getting any leading. It'll help remove any small hunks of that. With the sole and the patch, crusty five liter patch catcher back on there. Yep, that's pretty much um, stuff. on has a bit of blue from the phosphor bronze brush because this solvent that I'm using is the Helmar um, copper remover, it's a bit stronger. And it actually advertises on the bottle that it's better for removing lead than their carbon cleaner is. So I thought I'd just give it a hit with this because I'd only been using the um, carbon cleaner up until this point. I thought I'd just see if this would bring any lead out of the barrel. So it appears that it's working pretty much the same as the carbon cleaner. It doesn't appear to be bringing anything extra out of the barrel at all. Which leads me to believe that the carbon cleaner will do me from here on out. When I purchase, when I run out of these two, I won't even bother with the copper. Like I said, for 300 normal, you don't need it. Just run the carbon cleaner. A lot of guys who don't clean would probably benefit from the copper specific rem remover, but because I clean every time, because I live so close to the coast, I don't want anything to corrode. It gets cleaned regularly enough within an, a short enough round count that you won't see any benefit from having the stronger copper remover. And the Australians who end up watching this, the Helmar stuff works better than the Bortec Eliminator in my opinion. Works faster and it's $13 for half a litre compared to $60 for 473 mils of the Bortec Eliminator. Plus it's Australian made. Yeah, that'll do us for wet patches because that wet patch when I had a look at it, as it came out the muzzle, was pretty much clean. There's only the slightest very smudgy on it. So to switch to dry patches. And that's pretty well spotless. So basically at this point, just dry patching this out. I'll run maybe this one, the dry patch. And I'm going to put some solvent on the patch, swab it around in the bore. And then I'm going to, I think I can get away with two patches for the chamber. I mean, not the bore, the chamber. I'm specifically clean the chamber because like I said, the cases don't obturate very well. And there's, the cases come out filthy. And I mean, no, I'm not going to get two. I'll have to suffice with one. Don't fit through the patch loop. It is a pretty much a universal, I mean, really made for 30 cal patch loop. So 
I use for swapping the chamber. I want to get as much crud out of the chamber as I can. Because I don't do this step every time, I normally just hit it with a bit of oil. Protect it from corrosion. But then you got to remember, you got to clean that stuff out before you go shooting next time. These patches are big enough that they swipe the chamber just before they go down the barrel anyway, because I don't have a bore guide in. That allows it to get the chamber a bit more. I don't worry about a bore guide for this because it's not exactly a precision rifle. Let's see back here. Now, dry patch is down the barrel. Actually, I'll dry patch the chamber. And I'll put a couple more down the barrel just to make sure I've got everything out now that I've wet the chamber. It's probably a little bit of solvent in it just from the, the throat area. Give it a slight wipe out in there too. And got quite a bit of crud out of there. Hanging on to the chamber, right back to patching, patching out the ball. Then we'll hit the ball with some oil. The patch of oil will chamber enough all the way through as well. No need to specifically apply oil to the chamber. Very slight grey smudging. I have started using the Helmar Bore Oil, which I'll grab now. My hop is a leap oil or whatever it was called right now. So I switched to this stuff. It appears to do a good job so far. This is pretty thick stuff as well. Get a decent coverage on the patch. It's, it's a lot thicker than the Hoppy's oil. A lot thicker. It's supposed to be, so this firearm bore oil protects dry lubricant, superior corrosion resistance, does not attract dust. Um, still get a bit of run, because I stole my rifle's muzzle up, butt down. You still do get a bit of run into the chamber in action, but it does seem to dry fairly well. Both in the ball and in the action. Okay. One patch was enough. Quite a bit of overrun. So I pushed it in here. Clean that off a bit. Quick wipe down and the ejector and and the lever on any internal surfaces. Then I'm gonna spray everything down with ballastol and put it back together. It had slid down. Now if I hold that ejector in place like I said, 
the bowl to slide straight over the top. You only want it about to the halfway mark. At this point, you can lay it upside down. If you put it any further than the halfway mark, it's hard to make the lever up into its slot on the bolt. It's just something to keep in mind. I made that mistake the other day. There we are. Perfect. Give the little lever screw a go in the balance hole. Just enough to get him lubricated. So it helps if you're putting it in from the right side. <laughs> yeah. Just slip this on. difference if I did because I've somehow managed to scratch the tube. I don't know how because I didn't have it leaning up against anything. It's always been either in the safe or protective case so I don't know how that's happened. Everything looks good. I'm going to flip him back over. I'm going to put my Front sight hood on, which just slides over the sight body. Pretty much just do it with your fingers, and that should be us. Good to go, I think. All I've got to do is wipe the rest of the gun down with ballast on. That's good to go back in the safe then. I'm going to grab a rag here that I used last time I'm going to give everything a walk with If anyone's wondering why I've got the pick rail on it I may end up putting either a red dot or a very low power like one to five magnification scope on here. Um, I'm tempted by the red dot because I like how fast they are, but I have astigmatism in my eye and I don't exactly get a dot when I look through one. So it all really depends on what I can get at what price to go on here. If I manage to pick up a, a cheap enough, say one to four, one to five power scope, that'll do me just fine. Just lever from both sides. The trigger. So I'll be all ready to go back into the safe. So I'm going to pop in there for a second. Stick that on so it don't fall anywhere. There you guys, we're back here cleaning the 300 Norman mag. We're pretty much just going to require wet patches with this one. It has only fired a one round since. He was cleaned last. Just grabbing a rag. My 
my litre torch on top of the camera here is going flat as well. So I'm very quickly going to get this cleaned. First patch came out dirty. Should clean up very quick. It's showing quite a lot of carbon, but burns 83 grams of powder per shot, so that's sort of to be expected. Trying to get this done as quick as possible before this torch completely dies. If it dies, then I'll, I'll basically just up the ISO to 800 or so. It'll make the video footage a lot grainier, but we'll get it on camera anyway. <clears throat> Lowering the ISO on the camera, running the torch gives a lot better video quality. I only recently got the torch specifically for filming indoors here due to how dark this room is even with the two overhead lights on. Okay that fourth patch has pretty much come out just with light grey smudging. So what I might do is I'll run another patch and I'll just scrub it back and forth in the ball. Give it a good scrub, then put a couple more wet patches through, then I'll dry patch it out. Put some oil down the ball. Was actually tempted to just oil the ball, and I forgot to scrub it back and forth just then. <laughs> I'm too busy talking. But that one, that one almost came out clean. Didn't even really have grey smudging on it. I scrub one back and forth in the throat here a bit though. Pick up a lot of carbon out of that throat, which is good because we don't want a carbon ring to form. Get a scrub up near the muzzle because that's where you'll get most of the accumulation of copper, and that has come out. Even scrubbing it like that, it's come out pretty, pretty clean. I only really had one grey smudge. And I rotated the patch around to have a look then. So I'll go one more wet patch. I think the torch was actually dying when I was filming 4570 cleaning as well. Pretty sure I saw it flick down in brightness. Yeah, there we go. I bet you that smudging that's on there now is from the baffles and the muzzle brake. You always pick some up as the patch expands out when it comes out of the boring of the muzzle brake. Close that up. A handful of dry patches here. Start punching these down the ball. Not even going to clean the chamber. I'll just throw a bit of oil in it when I'm done. It could be a little while before I use this again now. There's no need to take it to the range anymore. Zero is confirmed. Um, zero's, zero stops setting elevation turret. Windage turret's zeroed out as well. It's a locking turret, so. I don't have to mess around with that. It locks itself when it's not being adjusted. Um, I haven't got my load data. The only thing I might do is I'll take the this load out and run it over the magneto speed at a couple of different temperatures and I'll record that in the Kestrel so that it can make some adjustments depending on the ambient temperature when I'm out shooting.
different places. I do have a place relatively close by where apparently I can get this out to around a kilometre to get to see there. So we'll see what happens there. Pull this out and a bit of a wipe off. I'm going to run a oil patch down here. Just more oil which I'll grab. Apply this fairly heavily and I might actually punch a dry patch after it just to get any excess out because I don't like it running back into the trigger. It doesn't bother me on normal hunting rifles but on a trigger that's set it's fine. I don't want any excess oil or anything like that really getting into it. It could make it unsafe. Okay, back to filming after I change the ISO on the camera because the litre torch went flat. I've put my heavily oiled patch down the ball. Now I might do one dry patch just to get most of that oil out. I don't get the bulk of the oil out. Now what I'll do is I'll run one patch with very minimal oil on it and that will just make sure there's that last little fine bit of oil in the ball. And that's very little oil on that patch. Because while I want the bulk of the oil out, I still do want Quite film. I want to film, but I don't want it enough for it to run. If that makes it any easier to understand. Another tip: these are the Pro Shop cleaning rods. Um, I can't remember the length of this one. This is a 42-inch stainless rod from Pro Shop. These are by and far the best rods that I have ever come across. After, since going to these stainless steel micro polished pro shop rods, I think that's what they call them, micro polished, something like that, stainless rod, I'd never go back to anything else. They're worth every penny. The handles, the ball, whatever they use in the handles, whether it's ball bearings or what they use, they're just amazing. I did break one of these. I broke the handle by, um, dropping it on the ground so i'll try to place them down a bit more carefully these days basically broke the ball bearings in the handle and it wouldn't rotate properly but i immediately replaced it because as i said they're the best rod i've used by far um, after having done that i'm gonna pop this back over here i doubt you want to see me doing that Move this camera a bit. I'll try and get a more of a close up of this muzzle and basically just using Q tips to wipe a bit of ballastol into the baffles of the brake. I'm not going to clean it because it's only fired the one shot. If I had fired more shots, instead of just applying ballastol with Q tips, I'd apply a solvent and then I'd um, like dry the solvent out. I'd leave it like apply it, leave it sit dry it out then I'd use ballastol for corrosion protection because it's only one shot I'll just use ballastol it's quite amazing how much solvent builds up in the baffles of the brake and just both sides of the brake a decent dry out before we apply some ballastol I find cleaning the brake every time I clean, I find it easier than letting it build up and then having to clean gobs and gobs of carbon out of it. Just 
There's a spray with ballast on down here. It's pretty much as simple as going through here and just giving it a wipe down. Any internal surfaces like this. This just helps ensure there's going to be no corrosion between now and the next time I use the rifle because it could be a little while before I get back out there okay now that's done I'll basically go back to giving this a wipe down I'll move this camera yet again and then we'll be back to wiping it down and putting it away I do have to wipe the bolt down as well which I'll do off camera because it's just literally wiping it over with a rag Okay, got to hit this with some ballast oil before we put it back in the safe. Give the magazine a wire. Not that I really touched it while shooting today. I single fed the rounds. Get it back in my barrel box, straight into action. And they took their little joyride down range. They give that a wipe. Again, I don't want oil running off the rifle here. Let them be attracting dust, which you don't really want to do. Give the brake a wipe over. That just gets any ballast all that's run out and around those baffles, around the bottom of them. Undo this. Lift it up for a second. And then I'll wipe the underside of the barrel back here. surfaces that I touched that are metal. Just gonna sit that there like that. And I'm gonna use one patch. Just very lightly, Joel, very lightly, and I do mean very lightly, hit with some ballast oil. To the point where you almost don't want to see the um, ballast oil on the patch. If I can hardly see that that patch has been wet at all with ballast on. I'm basically just going to get the rails, the lug rails, try and get the lug recesses because I don't have an actual action cleaning kit which probably would be an excellent investment. However, like I said I don't have one. That's the inside of the action but all I've got to do is put her in safe. So I'll get this edited up might take a couple of photos on the phone, might even set up the camera and do a video of the targets, but I don't really need to. Might just put some text in the video and explain them via the text. I'm just going to see it that way.